Welcome back everyone and this is going to be the bonus video for ray casting. Um, this will be the last video and then we're going to move on to other more fun topics. Um, looks like four months ago I created a video about um, picking and we used uh, frame buffers, custom frame buffers, to do color picking. You know, So you would draw an object on the screen in a, in a different buffer that would be a color and then you would just go click Anyone on the screen, and you get you would go search that buffer for the specific pixel, and that color would actually be the ID of the object that you're moving. Um, and we tried to build a gadget, a widget control gizmo manipulator. There's multiple names for what this is. It's, it's kind of a control, a UI control that allows you to move objects on on a 3D world. Um, in the video, I said, you know, this works for okay. Um, but we'll revisit this and complete it once we do ray casting. And now that we're finally done with ray casting, we're going like, uh, to do that. We're going to revisit the widget, the gizmo, and we're going to build one that actually really works, that uses um, everything we did with ray casting, plus a, a, a twist on it. Like I mentioned in the previous video, we're going to we're, we're going to do intersections without intersections okay so uh the first order of business is really there's a lot of code changes um i'm just going to quickly gloss through a lot of it um the orbit camera has a new function world to screen this allows us to pass in an array of um vectors that will transform it from 3d world space down to screen space 2D. Um, like in, in when we did the, the, the original Gizmo, you know, if you want to really understand this further, go watch uh, episode 26 because I'll go more into depth of how this works. Um, but I did, like I said, that's the idea is really to bring the coordinates from 2D space to 3D space. And we'll co quickly look at it because I have some new um, testing. Uh, functionality, some visual testing so you can actually see this work a little bit better. Um, let's see. And then the other files, uh, we got Raycast had an update. We have a new function called near segment points. Uh, it, uh, I got the algorithm from this uh, website. Um, the idea of the algorithm is, algorithm is to find two point, uh, to take two two lines and find the points that are closest to, that exist on those lines to each other. You'll see it visually, but that's what the, uh, you know, you have two lines, and where on those two lines are they closest to each other? If they're even close to each other at all. Because, um, so that's one. Our uh, keyboard and mouse controller has an upgrade um, where you can stack states. Uh, if you don't remember what this uh, object does, it kind of handles our mouse and keyboard um, controls. It kind of like uh, f feeds it into a state manager. So um, we can change state. So this way we can um, pass control of the mouse and keyboard to different parts of the application. Um, originally we would just change states and we kind of had to hard, hard, hard code it to go back to one of the previous states. Uh, for this lesson I decided to make it a little bit more intelligent where I'm going to do create stacks. So every time you switch states, it saves the current state into a stack and then you can just call the function unstack and it'll take the current state, remove it, and then go check out the, the stack and get the last used state to continue. So this way we can stack states and then rewind backwards. Um, and then it also has the default state. So if you unwind all the way to the very end, or you just say clear all and reset, we can then say, okay, well, since everything is empty, we're going to then use the default handler as our main state. Um, so that's that. Mat4, we, we had a function called multiply vector. And um, I, I, I'm replacing it with a, a new function called transform vector. Um, I think it's something similar, but it's more cleaned up. And I did a few, I think, I, think I, I forgot I got it from somewhere. I just changed a few things. And this is a lot cleaner version of the same function. Uh, it, it does. It's cleaner and it does the job much better. 
Um, of course, in entities, we have a new folder called UI, and we're going to put that's where we're going to put our transform transform gadget file. We're going to actually go into that more later. Um, GL only spacing uh, maths. I just threw a bunch of things that pre-existed uh, in our math library. Um, some things got renamed. Uh, uh, you know, uh, closest point to line in 2D, closest point to 3D. Uh, it just finds them. Um, if you have a, po a single point in space, like a mouse point, you want to find the closest um, point on a line that that single point, the external point, um, is closest to. It's the same thing from the segment to segment, except instead of uh, finding two points on a segment that are close to each other, you're trying to find um, where on a line is this point closest to it. Um, it's kind of it. It, it does. Um, I forget. I think it does like a projection on it. We've been doing this projections a lot on um, when dealing with um, uh, raycasting. So we've got two functions: one in two D, one in three D. Uh, and again, this is it, it algorithms in here. Um, closest point to two lines. Uh, I have like two. There's two versions of it. Uh, two lines are basically infinite. So you're gonna you're looking for the infinite points, and uh, closest two segments. Those are they have limits. Um, what else we got? Fungi. I think that was it for the math. We just do two new algorithms, and then you update the, the export, and then fungi. Uh, there's a new parameter to uh, the add a handler function, which sets it to uh, whatever handler that I'm adding to the controller. Um, that this one I want to be the default. So like from, so that's so I can just tell uh, that way our uh, function. Okay, so we're not going to go through this one. So those are all the changes because there's a lot of changes. If you care about uh, how um, updating uh, fungi, um, I'm going to have links to um, those two commits. So this way you can actually go through them and, and update, or you can, like I said, just download the whole thing from GitHub. Uh, up to you, how you want about it. Um, I just want to just quickly go through it because there's a, like I said, there's a lot of functionality. So let's. Go to the, some code. All right, so we're going to bring in our transform gadget, and we have a, a control handler for gadget. Very simple gadget uh, handler for it. Um, everything still the same. We're going to uh, add our con uh, gadget controller to our um, camera controller. It shouldn't be called camera controller anymore. It should be really something else. But um, yeah, that's what I call it, the camera controller that we pass in our, our handlers, our, our states, basically. Um, so we're going to create our gadget, set its position for fun. And then uh, we're going to tell our uh, gadget handler, this is, the, this is the gadget that we're going to um, be passing our mouse uh, controls over to this object. Um, it's a kind of weird wiring. So the controller has a state, which is now called gadget. And once it enters that state, and then f it'll, it'll feed all the mouse input into this gadget. It's kind of like an int uh, a kind of a middleman type of thing. And that object is very small. I'll show it to you really quickly. Uh, then we got our, un our mouse down handler. Oops, I hate when I press the mouse. So we're doing the same like thing we always do. We're we're, uh, we're getting our array. We're going to show our array, and we're going to do some testing. So now we're in our transform gadget. Uh, we've got a couple of things. Uh, we've got some constants up in here. Um, min click distance is the minimal distance. Um, We'll, we'll probably talk more. I'll talk about these later when we actually get to them. So, but there's just a couple of things. I'm just saving um, the directions um, of our, our axes. Uh, this is a quick function. It just uh, it's a vec two. 
it gives me the the length a square length no it's actual length because I do square it at the end so it just takes uh, two vec twos and then squares them, or it gives you the length of it. Uh, this is our gadget. Like I said, it's very simple. It uh, has a, our, uh, a reference to our gadget object. Um, on mouse up, it unstacks it, and on mouse move, it just tells the gadget, here's an unmouse, un unmouse event. Here's our X and Y position that the mouse currently is. So like I said, the gadget uh, handler is uh, very simple. Uh, so here's our transform. Uh, we're going to be drawing lines. We've got a couple of settings. Here's our target. Uh, this time around, we're going to be able to move in multiple axes. axes. Uh, we can move X, Y, or Z, or a combination um, of planes, basically. We, we can do plane movement as well with this gadget. So this gadget will have plane movement, not just axis movement. So if we pick a plane on our gadget, we will be able to move in that plane as well. So if we want to move on the X and Y plane, we'll just, you know, select the plane and then move, we can then move our object that way. Uh, this is pretty much our all the vertex data we need to visualize our gadget and then uh, you know we just create a simple renderable uh, set target it's very simple we save the reference to the target and then we copy um, the art the position of the object to the gadget so the gadget gets snapped to exactly where um, the, the object we're moving is uh, we also have an initial position because when we click on mouse down, we're going to take we're going to save a copy of the posi the, the the position of um, the object that we're moving because we're going to use we're going to use an offset that we're going to add on and or subtract to the initial position. So this way we can do an, a very nice smooth drag uh, dragging uh, objects on the screen. Uh, like I said, in the previous video, we did we ex we explored that a lot, and we're also going to do a bounding box uh, testing. Um, it w this test file, uh, the test version of is hit, won't be doing that, but it um, the final cleanup version does. So this way, before we start checking where we clicked in the gadget, we're going to actually test if it if you touch the general ID of the gadget, the general area, the volume of the gadget. All right, so now we're going to start exploring the actual concept. So we got the first section of code. The first section of code, we're going to loop our direction list. So to get it, just to visualize what's going on. Let me see uh, these two stay together. Uh, hopefully, it's easy for you to tell. So. Here's our gadget. It's a very simple looking gadget. It's an, it's it's drawn in lines. So you have blue, red, and green. That's our Y. That's X. That's Z. They're all pointing all in the positive direction. So in all honesty, this is what it really is. That's forward. That's right. That's left. And that's up. So you know, le left is actually you know the real direction that's in positive. Okay, so so now that we have our gadget and we have our, 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 our three lines of directions, we're going to loop through all the lines to determine where the ray um, touches it closely. So, so let's say if I click here, here's our ray. And I'm actually going to, like I said, I'm going to search every single line and say, okay, here's this, the, the, these two segments, the start and end of our array and the start and end of our X position. What is the closest um, point to it? And there is no closest point to it because there, it's, it has to be within the bounds of that line. Because like I said, I'm doing like kind of a segment check. But it is within the bounds of our Z. So there, there is an intersection point. So that is the closest point between the two, the shortest distance between that line segment and that line segment. Now if I were to do here, now you find the two points of intersection. 
well, that's like I said, there is no two points of intersection because I'm actually not intersecting the lines at all. I'm actually trying to find the closest points. Where are they closest to each other? So that point on that line and that point on our array, those are the closest points to each other. And same thing with blue. And I color code everything so we can kind of see. So now if I were to shoot a array right through, you'll find all the closest points our array has to to our to the three, the, um, the three lines, and then you have the output right here. So you you can kind of see. Let me refresh. Let's see. Let me just do that right here. Blue. So blue is the uh, the second va uh, thing on the array, and um, to, I don't remember what these values are, but I think they're like distances. Oh no, those are their um. I uh, those are probably the uh, the the t values for each line. So that's right. That's probably like, so it's 1.8 is for for the um, our array, and 0 0.3 is for our probably this one, if I remember correctly. And uh, it's saying no hit because it's even though I find the closest points, there there really is no hit at all. So. Like I said, here we have our, our, our um, array of directions, right, forward, and up, which really should be left, because I do, X actually is the right, left, but whatever. Um, <laughs> Unity always say, or says right, but in, in WebGL, it's really left, so whatever. I, I, I get confused. Um, so we're going to loop through that array of directions. And we're gonna call. We're gonna have. We're gonna use that function ray near segment points. So if I just quickly open fungi, it'll be under utility ray cast. Um, near segment points is the same thing as the new math function. So. It uses is the exact same one. It's closest to points two lines. I, I I don't know. It's hard to come up with good names. Closest point, the closest point of two lines. These are infinite. So like I said, these are infinite lines. Um, but that's the reason. There's a reason why I have two copies of it. So I'm using the exact same. Um, I'm using the exact same thing. Uh, the only difference I'm, I'm adding this this if statement where I'm actually um, making sure that the t value for both are with between zero and one. That's the only thing I'm doing. That's why I'm actually make it part of the ray object because it's very significant to the ray itself. So I, like I pass in the ray, then I pass in um, the two points of a segment, and I only care about. Um, the two points of the segment is it yeah so so as long as this ray is within the bounds of these two points then I will kind of consider it like a, we got a close a, like a, cl uh, a close hit so that's the only really big dis difference between these two functions because I have extra code in here to uh, do a limit uh, limit on it and I also think I'm doing a couple other things is this the same return value I think the values are I think yeah it's probably the same return values so I return back the two T's the two T values T U T V so yeah I do care about both I actually the same thing with ray origin the ray has to be within the ray T and has to be within the the segment that we're testing so as long as it's between 0 and 1 within we're within range of each other like what I would consider a range like with they're like near each other just right uh, that's when we get this uh, plot a point uh, uh, visually so when you see that point that means this uh, statement has been um, rendered true so we pass an array we pass all this information if we get inf uh, information back out then we just start to visualize it and there's a couple of if statements here. We're checking to see the distance, too. Uh, how f how far 
like I say, if I want to click here, I'm going to then test the length between here and here and here and here, right? And if the distance between any of these points that intersect, like even if I have three, if any of these points intersect, um, I'm testing to see the distance, right? So what I'm looking for is a very close call. So what I'm going to, let's say, okay, nice and I'm actually going to poke myself right here. Now, the lines do not intersect at all, but the distance between these two points is very, very small. It's uh, within the uh, a certain bounds that I set. So if it's within range, I automatically believe that it is like like I have I'll put here do single axis movement. So if I, as long as I'm within a range of a line, that's the line. That's the axis I'm gonna move things in. All right. So the distance here is really long. The distance here is really long. So like I said, I have to test all three to find the one that's the closest. So if I find one that's within range, that's the winner. So if I refresh again, the next thing I'm testing for, so what happens if it's not within range? Well, the next thing is if, if I don't click on any one, if I'm not within a range of any line, the next it's that I'm checking for is that is there any two points that are both within the plane range? So if you, you see how... We have uh, the, um, the, the, the the up direction. We have a start and end, and the same thing for this. This is a plane, a plane, but we want to bound it to like a rect. So if I'm within this rect distance, I'm going to consider this a plane movement. So if I click here, find plane that is furthest away from ray one, and uh, that's the first plane. Um, Oh, oh, you know what? That's right. Refresh. Because there's, there's, there's three things going on. So if I shoot an array right through here, I only get two points. And now it knows do plane movement. If it's not within the range, if I, let's say, click here, no hit. So the first if statement is any of the three lines with a very close range, like a very the closest like to it. That means we do, that's the axis we're going to move. If we click within within the boundaries of it, of two, that's the plane we're going to move. We're going to move here. We're going to move on the y position, and we're going to move on the x position at the same time. So that we're going to same thing. If we go shoot it this way, we're going to then move it in that direction. If we shoot it this way, we're going to move it on that plane. So this way we can move on two axes. Now the last thing we're checking is that this. Now we have three intersections. Which one do we do? Um, and by visually seeing it, it's like if I'm visually here and I shoot a ray, I really want to use that plane, the blue and red. Those, that's the plane I want. So how do I determine that? Well, by visualizing the data, I then see that the point that is closest to the origin, I can ignore. So if there's three points, of inter of the three points of like plane intersections or a rect uh, or a quad intersections, the closest to origin ignore. So these so these two points then determine that I'm going to use the y and the x position. So if I go let's say this way, same thing. Now the green and blue are the ones furthest away, and red is the one closest to origin. So I can just ignore that. So like I said, sometimes if you visualize the code, you find the answer very easily. So like I, so like I said, that's is that's the simple solution when you're dealing when you find have three points of act uh, of uh, I think that's like probably the only time that it's slightly wrong. Yeah, this is probably the only time it's slightly wrong. Uh, ideally, then I just move and then fix it. So it's not perfect, but overall, it works pretty well, especially if you're going in this direction. 
in that direction. I think it's just a little wonky when you're trying to go in a down direction. Um, I think what f what further checks I can do is, like I said, when I see visually, um, if one of the positions are like below Y or something, like if if, if I'm text testing testing X, is the Y points shorter than each? Other? You know, as long as the Y is within the range of this Y, if the X is within the range of the X. So there's there's a little bit further testing I can do if I if I need to. But like I said, the, the simple solution is really just find the, the one that's furthest away, or the closest to the origin you can just ignore and then use that for the plane intersection. So that's really what's going on through here. So we're here, we're looping, uh, we're testing the length. If it's within that distance, we're gonna save a value, value saying, okay, this is the min and this is the length. And as we loop through, I'm gonna keep testing. If, if it's shorter, if I find something even shorter, then that's the one I'm going to do. So, like I said, I'm going to f the one that has the that's less than the min click uh, distance, which is up here. Min click distance. So I want to get as close to the line as possible. So the one that I'm the closest to is the one that I'm going to use. So I'm ch I'm checking all of it and making sure I find the closest one. Uh, T ray. And this, I'm just trying to find the shortest uh, array one. I rem I don't remember what this one is for, to be honest. I I, I failed putting comments here. Um, so I'm using min t and i min t. Oh, okay. So. I really should comment this. Uh, what this is actually doing, because if I, if I read the law of the functions, th this if statement, I'm saving um, the smallest t. So in the event that I have uh, three points to deal with, that i t, uh, the i min t value, I can then use that to say, okay, I know the smallest, this, uh, the one that's the closest to origin. So that's what I'm really doing with with the, this if statement. I'm or here. I'm saving which access I'm closest to touching. In this one, I'm saving uh, which point of intersection is the one closest to origin. So I can ignore it um, during this if statement. So that's what's going on there. And then everything else is just visualization. So ideally, this uh, if statement should really just be these four lines of code. Uh, then I reset the array. And then um, and then we just do our if statements, and I set our direction that we're gonna go, and uh, and every time we we had a positive, we save our which axis we're 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 trying to move on. And uh, in the event there's one, we just kind of reset that that direction array with just that one axis that we want to move. In case there's multiple, we're gonna just say, well, we're gonna ignore everything else, and we're gonna use the closest one because you. Because the user clicked very, very close, so that the intent was to move on that axis. So that's why that's why I'm kind of saying we're doing intersections without actually intersecting. We're trying to intersect within a range. So we're we're trying to get close to intersection. So if we intersect or very close to intersection, we're going to say, well, that's we hit that line. If it's two, we're going to just do plane movement. If it's three we're going to remove the shortest distance from origin. And that is the end. And then from there, I just double check, make sure we have some kind of direction and we move on. Uh, this, this part is just for visualization. So if I, let's say if I do that, now you see there's a gray line. So now I'm just going to visualize. Okay, what directions I am am I going to um, what di what directions am I going to start moving? So this that chunk of code kind of visualizes like okay, so I'm going to do that. If I do that, you'll see there's three um, there's two gray lines. So because I'm doing a plane intersection, if I'm going to do that way, I'm going to move through that plane. If I'm going through that, I'm going to be moving through that plane. So that's just visualization. 
for you know you know what planes are like just to show me which directions we're moving um even though i am visualizing it i'm actually going actually going to use those lines or something um i want to this is like related to the, the the previous video i'm going to take these two points like I, I was wrong when i said i'm only using this for visualization sorry those lines those lines of intersection, those are great lines. Those are the points I'm going to take from world space and bring them into 2D screen space. So those are the two points, and it's an array because I'm going to do handle multiple. And I'm going to use like a flat um, array of points so I know to loop through every two. Um, then we have the uh, uh, this part actually translates everything into from 3d space to 2d space and that's what i said in the orbit camera we have we have a function right here world to screen space it's exactly what that is the only difference is i, I just dumped it in here so we can visualize it so at the very end um so i got rid of the so once we have those gray lines created we're going to move them into screen space it's a whole mess of math, and you, if you want to watch the previous video, that other uh, that other video for more explanation, you can. And then this is kind of a hack because there's uh, I don't want I don't want to go too crazy creating a canvas so I can draw, and I can't really draw two two D screen space on three D. I I could, but I don't want to go through the hassle of trying to calculate it. So a quick simple hack is just create a uh, an HTML div layer. Um, set a bunch of styles to it, and then put the x and y position that I've, I eventually calculate. So this is the x, the, the actually 2D space coordinates. So if I click save, I go over here, refresh. So if I were to intersect that plane, and you you see the new orange points, those are the div layers. That's why if I move everything away they don't move because those are div layers on top of our canvas. So, and it, but as you can say, visually, it's perfect. Those are exactly the points of world 3D space translated into screen space. This is not that, like I said, th those values are now within the HTML page. Um, so the, because in the previous video, I, I didn't visualize it. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have this idea of visualizing it. And this time around, I wanted to visualize it to really prove it, that um, it really does work. And I think it didn't work perfectly, so I did end up fixing it a little bit. I can't remember. It's, it's been over a week. So with that visualiz visualization out of the way. So now that we have, now we have the points in 2D space. And the final thing we're going to do, I think I have more visualization stuff we can do that I'm using HTML for. Let me just move it down. Now the last thing, now that we have our two points of, um, our two lines or our one line, our access lines basically, we're going to use those as guides to track the mouse movement. So once, since we have these two points in 2D space and the mouse actually lives in 2D space, it lives in 2D screen space, we don't longer have to deal with 3D um, calculations to determine the movement. So like I said, since I know this line in 2D space, I'm gonna have this line continue infinitely, not infinitely, but very large version of it across the screen. And I'm gonna go also this way so this way uh, so then we can use a function that when i click on a mouse there's a point on the mouse find the closest point on this line and that line that this mouse is to so this way i can then track uh the movement so since i clicked here i translate i know i know the uh, the screen base values of x and y because that's the well, that's where I started. So uh, from here, I went from 2D into 3D. And then while I was in 3D, I found these four points and then brought them back into two, into 2D world. And now that I, now I can do the dragging 
in 2D space. So once I have these two, those two plane, or those two um, lines that I can use for like for comparison, I save this point in relationship to those two lines. So that is now the official offset, the starting point. Um, and I'm saving it per axis. So even though I clicked here, that is the the starting offset of this line. That is the starting offset of that line, but in 2D space. So when I start moving these. Um, like, like these dots invisibly will move, but I will compare it to the, like the starting points of each line. So this way, if I, so I know if I'm going in positive or in a negative direction. So no matter which direction I'm in, where the camera is and I'm dragging, I always know which way I'm going. So that's what all this does. So the final bit of code is really just to set up those uh, points. So I, I set up the, the initial delta. And the initial delta is I'm going to take the point on the line that that is the positive end, which is A. Like I said, up here, uh, when I'm creating these lines, the A is the positive direction and B is the negative. So I always know, always know the first point of the line is always going in the positive direction in 3D space and B always goes to negative. And by doing that, I also, I'll use A, the position of A as the offset distance. And I'm using the distance between the, the, the start of that line to the point of the cl closest point of intersection. And then I set up the other values to do the math. Like I, said, I go more in detail in previous videos. I don't want to go in too much into that. And um, that's it. And then at the very end, I save the initial position of our the object that we're dragging. And uh, that is it. So now, now with that all out of the way, if I go back to here, we're going to now comment out the test function. Now we're going to use the, the more ver uh, clean up version of it. If we intersect it and we have some type of um, some type of axis to move in. It's like if we determine that we're moving on a certain axis or on a certain plane, if it's if it's successful, we're going to switch our our control state to our gadget. So we're going to stop uh, the the orbit camera, the orbit handler, or the orbit state that actually controls our camera, and we're moving it to gadget. So this way now the gadget is now taking care of all the x uh, the mouse movements. And on a mouse up, it's, it, it uh, reverts back from the stack and it goes back to the previous state, which is the orbit camera. So once the mouse is up, we control the camera again. Once the mouse is down and we have an intersection, the camera stops moving. Uh, okay, so uh, do we need to do anything else? I guess we can uh, minimize this. Oh, that's right. Probably should. Uh, this is the same thing from the previous uh, function. Um, like I said, every time we move the mouse, we then try to determine the closest points. Again, like we're, we're trying to get the closest points on those lines that we determine from 3D space into 2D space, and we calculate the distance, and then we use that distance to um, then find the you know, how much movements to do. And the only thing I did, I added, is snap movement. Uh, if I, uh, You'll see that we can actually snap the movement um, in increments instead of doing it nice and smooth. So, um, oh, that's right, another thing I need to do. Do I? Well, let's comment this out for now. So if I refresh. Reposition on null. I guess I do need that. Uh, I think this, yeah, this gadget needs to work with an object because the way it's programmed for now. So 
we're going to add a cube and we're going to add our gadget to the screen scene and we're going to set the target to the cube so if i click refresh probably hard to see but if i click there now i can move if i pick uh the blue i can move the mouse anywhere i want but it's going to move in that axis only if i were to click here now i move up the in the in the there's two axes and you can see the movement is um It's snapping. It's not smooth. And uh, I don't know what happened, but it looks like it's no longer... Oh, that's right. The, the cube isn't um, perfect. Now, it is aligned, but the the, the alignment is um, uneven. Because a single unit is divided up into five points. But, um, but yeah. So, as you see, it snaps. Um, if, you don't, if you don't want snap, or you want to make it into a mode... You can just take this part, comment it out, now it's nice and smooth, it, it's no, there's no snapping, so you can drag it all you want, yeah, but yeah, you can set the, the, the snapping, and the, the snapping is very easy, uh, you take the, the, the distance that you're moving, you divide it by movement, um, and you round it. Um, so this way you kind of uh, get rid of all the, um, the the remainder, like that that the the the, the like if I if I want to move it basically one unit at a time. If if it's uh, if I moved like one point four distance, if I round it, it's going to round down to one. If uh, if it's like one point five, it's going to round up to two. So it snaps into the next. Um, increment of two. So once you know how many times that divides into your snap distance and you round it, then you have to multiply it by again by its movement. So this way now you know how many times with uh, how many increments, then multiply the actual length of that increment and then you get your new delta. Snap movements are very easy to do. Um, and that is really it for now. Uh, that's uh, like I said, uh, this is really just a continuation from the video from four months ago, and uh, now just how to do it with um, ray casting and some other fun things. And this is what the cleanup version of the function does. Um, there's very little. Uh, there's more comments in this version. So I did I, when I was cleaning up, I did comment a lot on this one. Cleaned up the if statement. Took all took out all the visualization. Um, Instead of doing the world to screen space, I'm using the camera function that I, I kept mentioning that we're using. That's that. And uh, yeah, everything's like slimmed down and uh, cleaned up. So this handles our testing for it, our, where in our gadget that we're hitting. And um, mouse movement handles uh, the actual movement and it moves our target our, tar our target and our gadget at the same time and uh, so even though I use bits of fungi to really visualize it the concepts and the ideas are transferable um, so you can still do all this in uh, in whatever language you're doing um, if you're doing OpenGL with Java or whatever so the concept wise like everything in this uh, function and then like any like this kind of supporting functions really uh, or like I said the hit test uh, one doesn't use a lot of uh, supporting one it's just like that near segment function you can put that over into your project um, and then how you translate into uh, you know into a screen space um, and, I, and in all honesty, this is not the only way to go about dragging, um, moving everything into 2D space. 2D space. You can um, do everything in 3D space. And then every, so that means every time you move the mouse, you have to do um, an intersection, like a plane intersection in 3D space. Um, 
uh, which I think is requires a lot more work because uh, you, you, you know because you have every, that means every single time you move the mouse you have to take your 2d space bring it into 3d space then you got to do a bunch of 3d math to determine where you're moving um, it just, it's to me it seems like it's easier just to bring everything into 2d space and handle it that way and the math is a lot simpler because now you're only dealing with two point uh, you know X and Y instead of X Y and Z um, so, so you just had to go through that extra hassle of bringing all your values from 3D space into 2D space, and then you, then during the moving, you don't have to do any more um, 3D mathematics. So that's why I went that way because it seems like it's like the it's a little harder to start with, but while you're doing the movement, like actually moving things, I think it's it's less processor intensive. So, um, yeah. So that's, like I said, it's not the only way to do it. You can do it all in 3D. You just choose what, what feels more comfortable or what you think um, is more efficient. Um, but yeah, since you've, we've done so many videos on a point intersection, you can't, you, if you want to do this in 3D, you probably can very easily. You know, just find the, the starting point of whatever axis or whatever plane that you're intersecting and just save the, the starting delta and then just, you know, the difference be that you currently are from your p through the starting position is determines how many times how much incrementing you should be doing for the most part hopefully I didn't explain that correctly uh, so so yeah now we have a very well like I said it's w well working works very well like I said I can I'm moving the mouse all the way around it's just that access and uh, So I can move that plane. Perfect. And like I said, I added snap in there for fun. Um, but the grid is, is increments of 0.2. And uh, so it's slightly uneven from origin. That's why it doesn't snap as perfectly. But um, yeah, if I were to do this in like one or increments, so a snap, 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 it would work beautifully. So you change things to how you want your application to work. So, um, so that's yeah, that's the end of raycasting. I think I'm done with raycasting for a long time. I don't want to touch this subject for a while unless I need to do something, which I probably don't because we've done just about everything we can probably do with um, uh, ray intersections. Uh, we've done all a bunch of objects, uh, some tricks, uh, visualizations. So. There you go, and like I said, and, and, and the camera controller works pretty well. So the like, switching states, so that's so once mouse up, I can control the camera again. So there you go. So we have a very well working gadget, widget manipulator, whatever you want to call it. Um, I want to go back to start doing armature uh, armatures, skeletons and bones. Uh, I've already got most of that coded back into modules and uh, fixing up some of the code here and there. Uh, but the next video, I'm going to do a slight detour. The next video, I'm going to make um, the starting of a particle system. I want to start doing some 3D effects. I've been spending so much time doing background stuff, uh, doing a lot, a lot of math uh, just to build systems. Uh, but some of the systems are not very wow worthy. Like all this ray intersection stuff is it, it's very useful. It's very very important. But at the same time, it's there's it's nothing wow worthy. It's not like you look at the screen. It's like oh my god, that looks so awesome. So I want to start doing some really awesome looking things, because uh, that's the whole point of graphics programming. You want to make some awesome looking things. So I want to do some crazy crazy effects, and I've been watching videos on. Um, how, how effects are created using Unity. And now they haven't understand how effects works, now I, start to, I have to start building that system. And the starting point of, of a, an effect system is a particle system. So we're going to start the next lesson, next video, start building that, uh, going through the concepts of uh, building one. And uh, we're going to start using new features in WebGL 2.0, uh, which is called uh, Transform Feedback which is going to be a cool thing to look at. It's kind of complicated. Not, not so much complicated, but 
idea was a little wonky. It took me a, a while to get get it working, understanding or just right. But that's going to be fun. Particle systems is going to be a fun one. Um, and so then we're going to go we're going to dive deeper into armatures. Um, start trying to do some pose and animations, and eventually a, ca a character controller, so we can control a character moving, like walking and maybe running and jumping. Uh, that's that's the whole skeleton bones thing I want to uh, get back into again now that we're done with inter intersections, and I want to start dealing with mini voxels too. So we're gonna I'm gonna try to bounce back and forth between three different subjects depending on my mood of the week, and if I want to do effects with particle systems, uh, skeleton bone animations, and um, or voxels. I want to start. I would like to start doing making some kind of voxel thing so we can just have um, you know like couple of simple cubes auto-generate um, based on data. Uh, so yeah, that's it. I uh, hope you like it. This is the last video right into sections. This is the bonus. This is a promise I made four months ago, and we finally made it here. And I um, hope you liked some of the new tricks. That's kind of fun to play with intersections. Cause like I said, this is kind of like a flyby. Like I like that idea of like almost hitting it and counting that as an intersection. So that, that was a kind of fun little thing to, to play with. It's kind of tricky. It's not tricky. Um, uh, clever. It's clever. It's like the word. I like, I've like. i been using that word a lot lately. Little clever things to do. Because uh, uh, I've been reading that programmers hate it when other programmers are clever. Uh, trying to be funny with their code. So I'm using it as an insult, I guess, for myself. I'm being clever. <laughs> I don't care. I think, if you, I think it's fun to be clever, even though it might make things unreadable. Um, if you if you if you're not having fun programming, then there's something wrong. <laughs> really is. Then you shouldn't be doing this. Um, all right. Yeah. Okay. Like and subscribe. See you guys in the next video about uh, the beginnings of particle uh, systems. Bye bye.